Contact sounded good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He said, so are we. Oh, he wants to land it just on the upslope in the middle of the green right there. Okay, he's getting himself a putt at it. Let around 10 feet. I think so. 10 feet from your first PGA Tour victory. They had the lead. It was up to three. Not sure he knew it at that point because there aren't that many leaderboards out there. But now he knows exactly what he needs to do. Make a 10-foot putt, become a winner on the PGA Tour. And I like what he did there. He went up and looked at the green to see what he's dealing with because from 70 yards downwind uphill, you can't see anything visually. So really having to trust the number. But to walk up there and take a look around, see what's going on, that was a nice decision. And he hit a good shot. Now the real key is to kind of quiet your mind. Not get too into what this putt means. You know, he's going to have to wait while both Ryan Armour and Doc Redman putt. Until he has his opportunity. Solid showing coming in. Share a 13th. Huh? Can you make one, bro? Yeah, the Shriners. And Redmond and Armour. First to go before he gets his opportunity. So Ryan Armour is currently in a tie for eighth. This would move him up to a tie for fourth. Should he make it? He's got a little bit to deal with there. He's a little slope right there that he's walking up that he'll have to contend with. Pretty sizable slope. It's going to be slow, and it's going to turn left. Yeah, the last two-thirds of it are fairly flat. It should do most of the turning right there, about to that point where his caddy was pointing. for these guys that, that aren't going to win this tournament. They want to finish strongly. They've played well all week, put a lot of work, a lot of mental energy into playing well under these conditions. Good effort there. Yeah, you can't overstate how much the last couple of days, really Friday and Saturday, must have taken out of players mentally. Just, I mean, you're you're thinking over every shot because of the wind. They're 25 to 30 miles an hour on Friday, almost that yesterday from a completely opposite direction. And normally, in windy conditions, you get a little bit of break on and around the greens. And Friday, Saturday, there was no let up. You had to factor it into everything you did. So Redmond's next, but full concentration from Wyndham. Doc Redman, he uses one of those putters. It's very long from the, the face to the back of the putter. And we have a little bit of the collar from the rough to contend with in his stroke. Might put the ball a little further back in his stance just so we can get a little bit steeper on it. Should be moving just a little right just to get from a tie for fourth into a tie for third. More points, more money and more confidence. Solid week though. 69 final day, two under, and three off the lead. Sierra fourth. 
And so it comes down to this from Wyndham Clark. For his first win. Surprised he hit it with that much pace. I think he is as well. Right back. Spends a lot of time practicing before his round on putts of this length. Okay. Finishes up with a par, and two are at the top at 15 under. More work to do. And there'll be a playoff between Wyndham Clark and Brian Gay. Honors tap in. So 69, 11, under, and a share of eight. But we'll have Brian Gay and Wyndham Clark in a playoff here in Bermuda. They'll go to 18, but they're still playing 16, 17, 18. That's the order. A step away, final round 65 from Wyndham Clark. Let's just say thanks to Mr. Glenn Jones of the Bermuda Tourism Authority. The play, guys. CEO there, our great host this week. And in the playoff, we're going to play 18, 16, 17, and 18. And Brian, you finish first, so you'll draw. Glenn, if you'll uh, give him an opportunity to do that. Two. Two. Wyndham, you'll lead off. Play well, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. You got a ball, man? Yeah. All right, so got the order and just about ready to go. And Jerry will be out there with Lyndon Clark. Gary will be with Brian Gay. Caddy tells him the same spot. That would be ideal. I think this is an easier tee shot for Wyndham Clark because he can blow it over that last fairway bunker. For Brian Gay, it's still in play. Very similar line, just right of the first one. It's going to land in the rough. Not going to end up in the rough, though. No, it's not down there as far as his tee shot and regulation, but it's in perfect, perfect shape. We'll have a little fuller swing. Might be an actually an easier shot than what he had just a few moments ago. Or a bit of an errant tee shot for Gay, the 72nd hole, but then a brilliant second. Well, certainly pressure applied there by Wyndham. As you said, Justin, this bunker is very much in play with this club. Yeah, with Wyndham in good shape, Brian Gay's got to put this ball in the fairway. Started up the right. Is it turning? Yes, it's turned enough. And that's in nice shape as well. So advantage Clark, but they're both in the fairway. So first hole of this playoff, Ryan Gay and Wyndham Clark. Second shot's coming up here in the second edition of the Bermuda Championship. There. He's got some pressure on him now. So Wyndham Clark now for the answer. Five yards farther than regulation, 41 front, 75 hole.
great shot, even better than the one he played in regulation. Two good ones, gonna be a putting contest. Been making these putts, these types, all day. He's had the perfect pace each and every time, except for the 17th. What a punt. What a time. It's been a machine. Get it anywhere close to 15 feet, it's going in. Been playing golf against that guy for over 30 years, and uh, he is a cool customer. So Wyndham Clark, this to stay alive and extend. Oh, loss. So close to his first win, but it's Brian Gay. It's been a while, but he's back in the winner's circle on the PGA Tour for the fifth time. Well, with all the talk of the youth movement and the game of golf, to have three players in their 40s win so far in this young season, just phenomenal. Made the big shots, but also the big putts. They did that all day, but then how about that? Second at 18, the 72nd hole. Eventually a birdie, and then birdies it again in the playoff as we send it down to Jerry. Thanks, Terry. He came over and said, holy shnikes, at 48 years old, your fifth win. In some ways, is this one maybe a little bit sweeter? Oh, this is absolutely insane. It's kind of deja vu. You interviewed me. I'm pretty sure when I won my first one at Nyakoba in 08. I've been playing awful since COVID, and uh, it's been a struggle. I've been trying to work hard and get back, and uh, I love this place coming last year, finished third, so I had good, good feelings coming in. What do you prove to yourself when you perform like this against guys who are younger and hit it a lot farther? Yeah, I mean, you look, I always know I've got the game to compete out here. You know, you, certainly it's easy to doubt yourself. The players are so good and, and so so young, like you said. A lot of them are my daughter's age, so <laughs> it's pretty, uh, pretty unbelievable. Congratulations, man. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Taken back by that. Seven years between wins. They're coming to us in 10 seconds here. For the fifth.